The woman pouted and crawled towards the boy who was peeing, but pushed him away from her as soon as she could. The boy looked away shyly. The woman, however, lowered herself even more, put her face close to the foul-smelling dirty water, looked at the maggot-filled sewer, and seemed to notice something. Immediately afterward, the woman told the boy to take off his clothes and crawl out of the room down the gutter. The boy was reluctant, but took a deep breath and plunged headlong into the foul-smelling dirty water. In this way, he kept walking through the dirty water, but it did not escape from the chamber, but came to another room inside. The woman was scared out of her mind, shouting randomly, I think it must have been inhuman torture. The boy had to continue to move forward, but unexpectedly another room is a white collar worker's, to her constantly throwing the plate. However, that plate throng, but kneeling and crawling to the boy in front of the body, tightly embraced praying to take their own away. Luckily the woman in the third room seems much more normal, with manicures and silver bracelets all over her hands, plus leopard print clothes and an exploding hairstyle, while the woman looks calm and understands a certain amount of what's going on. It turns out that a woman has been kidnapped from each room, but the sewer in this room has been blocked, so the boy has to return to his room and tell all, while the woman still doesn't let him go, and tells the boy to check down the other side. Unexpectedly the woman in this room is unusually insane and reveals a shocking secret. Every six days at six o'clock, someone is killed, and everyone trapped in the room dies. The boy, full of misfortune, ran his hands into the water and indeed grabbed a large handful of hair. Watching the horrific scene, the boy is also frightened all over, and then rushes back to his room, and tells the woman that every six days at six o'clock, someone is killed. But the woman never found a body surfacing in the sewer. In order to verify the truth of the matter, the two squatted next to the stinking gutter and waited. However, long after 6 o'clock in the ditch still did not find half anomaly. The two did not wait, but picked up the bread on the ground to eat. But in order to escape from the secret room, they can only do early plans. Soon, the boy drilled into Kilmarner's room, ready to look for useful items, hoping that, all brought together, they would be able to find a way to escape the secret room. However, the boy looked at what he had in his hands and didn't know what to do. However, as soon as he saw the six bulls in the doorway, he seemed to think of something and quickly gathered the other things to return. However, the woman looked in was speechless. He then took his lipstick and started counting on the wall. Soon the number of days each person had been trapped was written in the corresponding position. Sure enough, the two watched the sewer again and finally noticed something strange. The clear pool water became more and more fiery and the two continued to watch in horror. Sure enough, the familiar socks and the bottom of the pool of the manicure appeared in the pool. The woman looked at the hurriedly cover their mouths. Hide a side to vomit. The thought of not a few days will also be miserable. Suddenly hugged the boy and cried. However, in order to escape his clutches, the boy could only burrow into the sewer again, looking to the people next to him for items. The woman was also quick to take off her clothes and hand them to the boy, and gave him the most valuable thing on her body along with them. But he never expected that today would be the day of his death. Just as the two were talking, there was a sudden sound from the doorway, followed by the iron door being opened, and a sharp chainsaw appeared in the eyes of the two. Seeing this, the woman was even more unable to control her emotions, hugging the boy and crying in pain, but there was no intention of letting him go. On the other hand, the woman looked at her watch. The time had come, the boy did not return, but instead blood came out of the sewer. She thought the boy had been killed by the murderer, but the next second, he came back from the blood. It turned out that the boy had not been trapped for six days, so he was released directly. The boy then explained everything he knew to the woman. Over the next day, the boy went around to several other rooms and had everyone take their clothes off and eventually gathered them together for the woman to create a dummy. Immediately afterward, the woman takes a homemade slingshot and beats the bolt to it, and soon the murderer opens the iron door and walks in. The woman, however, bravely protects the boy and waits for the final outcome. Seeing this, the murderer demon strides forward and swings his chainsaw, but unexpectedly the woman dodges a dummy just in time, but is cut to the ground. The woman also shouted at this point, telling the boy to run away quickly, and the man just tried to get out, but unexpectedly, the boy stuck the iron door firmly in, trapping him inside. Immediately afterward, she opened the door of the room next to her, and then the door of the other room, and managed to save everyone but the woman in her own room, who was her sister. The boy walked towards the iron door and could only be set in by the pain. He wanted to pull the bolt and see his sister's last look, but was stopped by the other woman. If opened, then the sister can only be sacrificed in vain, and finally several people managed to be rescued toward the police station outside.